Hey everyone, so I just wanted to do a uh, like a one year uh, review-ish type thing uh, on the TS-80 and uh, just let you know my experiences with it and see if anybody else has had a similar experience or similar problems. So like I said, I bought this about a year ago and uh, have been using it mostly as my primary soldering iron ever since. And I really like it. When it works, again, when it works, it's great. Uh, it heats up and uh, I haven't even timed it. Uh, it, it. It's that quick that I don't even think of it. It's probably under 20 seconds. And you, you, know, you hit the button, it starts heating up, get ready. And by the time you go to go to solder something, it, I mean, it's there. It tells you the temperature, the wattage being used, um, everything on the display. It's, it's, it's great. You can set the temperatures. It's not a whole lot of mass on the tips. Um, so, you know, ground planes, you really got to heat this thing up if you're going to even tackle a ground plane. But that's why you know I have other irons that I can use for that but I use it as my primary now right now just to make things clear electronics has become more of a hobby for me so I'm not using this um, you know eight hours a day five days a week that kind of deal it's it's used when I need it and you know anybody who uses who does similar stuff knows that days could go by that you're not working on stuff and then you work on a project and it might use it for two hours straight or otherwise it would be one solder joint put it away and you're done so it's not it's it's lightly used it's not heavily used let's put it that way so anyway i got this thing um immediately had problems with it you plug it in you know it comes with this adapter over here and um you know the, Q, the quick charge adapter as well as i bought a um, battery bank uh, it was having problems it was saying low voltage low voltage and uh you, real finicky you always had to unplug it plug it in i tried different usb cables i tried the battery i tried that it still had this problem i looked up online everybody says oh you have to uh update the firmware it's a known problem cool update the firmware and it got better but um only just and the firmware i wound up using allowed it to work on five volts and you know what i'm if anybody has these things you know what i'm talking about but it barely gets over 200 degrees and i really don't like doing that because i know that you know, with less voltage, there's going to be more current, even though it's limited at, I, I don't know, one volt, or I'm sorry, one amp, maybe two at the most. Still, it's putting uh, any of these transistors in here through, you know, a lot, I would imagine. So I kind of stay away from that mode. But it was still trying to go to five volts. Eventually, you would get it to, to work properly. One day, I plug in the cable, and it doesn't turn on. I unplug it, plug it in, unplug it, plug it in, and I hear crackling. I pull the cable out, and there's smoke coming out the, the top where the, the USB connector is. If I was smart, I would have gotten my money back or returned it on exchange, or returned it on exchange, returned it on warranty and got an exchange, or, or whatever the case may be. I don't even know what the warranty is on these things, uh, but it was bought through Amazon, and you know Amazon, you can return just about anything from them. But I wasn't smart. I took it apart and found out that... Uh, the connector, the, the plastic piece in the middle of the USB connector started melting and um, shorted something out and the, the board was cooked and there was a, uh, a bad solder joint on one of the pins going to the board. I don't know if that was beforehand or after, but I'm assuming it was beforehand by the way it was acting. So I took the connector off. I stuck a, uh, a micro USB connector on because that's all I had at hand and fired it up and immediately got smoke, got a little red dot in the middle of the board. You could see it glowing. So I dug that out. Uh, it was a short, and it must be a, multi, a multiple layer board because it looked like it was coming from within the board. So I dug it out and made sure everything was nice and clean, put the, the connector back on it and got it working. Now it sounds easy, but it took me quite a few hours to actually get that done properly. Again, should have just returned it, didn't. Got it working. Now it has to just work off of a, uh, a you know a micro USB, and I'll show you that here and i'll show you that this is micro usb and it plugs it into it only goes one direction unfortunately but tip disconnected boom works so cool all right well it's one hurdle it's not the greatest but you know it works and i'm totally content with just using a micro usb so cool so it worked so then about a month later i started having problems with the tip now these are the tips the ones i bought uh, it came with one. I bought these ones here. And obviously these are multiple pieces. And the top piece started coming apart. So I immediately ordered uh, these tips here. This is the original. I saved it. Now if you notice... 
it, I mean, the metal, you can see this metal here kind of is warped. It just, it just came apart. It just absolutely just started falling apart. It still worked. I just, you know, didn't trust it. It was going to break at any given moment. Now with something this small, you don't put a lot of pressure on the joint. I've had soldering irons that, you know, you, you could just, you know, they were old ones and you could just, you know, dig at the, at the board if you had to. You don't do that with these little things. Plus you don't really have, you know, it's too small. You really can't get a lot of force on there. But this broke anyway. So I was always careful not to put too much pressure on it, but it still broke. So I thought, eh, maybe it's just a bad day at the factory, whatever. So I ordered these ones. And they've been okay. I've actually had very good luck with this thing at that point. But recently, this tip, I got a, a conical and a wedge. And that was just a little blip. And it's grown from the thermal cycles. There's just a little piece of metal missing out of it and now it's growing and it just continues to grow it's to the point now where it doesn't even fit in the case you can even see that joint there i'm not sure if that's going to last much longer because it's i'm not going to put any pressure on it but yeah um i really don't like the way this tip has aged and again i'm not using it all that much but it is what it is i figured i would just continue to use it and get what I get out of it. I had a conical as a backup and I still use the conical actually for other things as well. So, um, so let's do this. Let's turn this on and the tips in there. I'm going to hit go and yeah, it heats up very quickly, but watch what happens when it starts getting really hot. When it starts getting towards 300, notice how it's starting to bounce around. I have it set to 400 right now, or 410 or something. I don't know. What do I have it set to? 410. Just to demonstrate. Notice it's just going nuts. It's just bouncing around. Now, this tip is hot. This, like, this tip will melt solder. I'll show you. Yeah, it will melt solder. Everything's working. But it's just... Uh, the temperature is all is really finicky and the problem is it uses the temperature reading to be able to use it. it's just going nuts so i thought you know let's make sure it's not the iron and i don't ever use this case because i can never get the damn tips out i just did it for the video i keep these actually i, I have a uh, a stand that these can go in so let's put the conical in and i'll show you Conical works just fine. This one, for whatever reason, heats up a little bit slower than the other, I think, anyway. But you notice that the temperature is, you know, pretty much spot on. It's real steady. It works normal. And again, I think I still have this thing set to... So, you know, it bounces a little bit right there, but that's, you know, perfectly fine. See, so it's settling around 410. I can even go down to 400. And there you go. So this one, the conical is fine. And, and the conical gets the, the use, the, the least amount of use out of, out of both of them. I use the wedge tip most. So that's where I stand right now. I know this isn't you know, the most thorough, uh, review, but I just wanted to share my experiences. I, I really like this. I really do. Uh, it's, it's comfortable to, I mean, it's, it's, it really is perfect. Um, I've used, uh, you know, wellers all my life, you know, just the basic ones you plug in. It's got the heating element back in the, you know, the, the rod down here, not in the tip. They were great, but super reliable, but they didn't heat up very fast. They were kind of bulky with that big cord hanging off of them. I've had a uh, soldering, couple soldering stations. One was an old one from like 1950s that was given to me by my uncle when I was a kid. That was great. I think I, if I could find it, last time I used it was I don't know, five, ten years ago, and it, it worked because it was just a transformer that went to a heating element it, it, with a, a switch. That, I think it had like three secondaries on the transformer, and, and it just the switch choose between them. Super basic. It still worked. The wellers always work. The other one I have is a pace uh, was given to me. And the problem is with that is the tips are extremely expensive. Um, I mean, it's affordable. 
I mean, it's, you know, I could buy them, but I just don't want to spend $75 on a tip. I just, I just have a problem with that, especially when the tip has, the, on that one in particular, the pace, the heating elements actually in, in the iron, it's not in the tip. So all you're buying is a little piece of metal. You can get aftermarket tips for much cheaper, but you get what you pay for usually. And I haven't tried them. I'm kind of afraid to, because if you get a, a, a bad soldering, um, you know, iron tip, it's poorly plated and, um, you're not going to get a lot of life out of that and could contaminate some joints, which would cause problems down the line. So I haven't really ordered any tips for that one. And when this came in, I just started using this because this is great. It's it's convenient. I just wish it was a little more reliable. I wish the the uh, the tips were higher quality. I wish that uh, that this wasn't so finicky. So I'm wondering if anybody else has had any problems with this or if I just got a bad one. And... Um, you know, let me know. But other than that, you know, now it's besides that tip, which just started acting up. So I guess I'll have to order a new one. Um, you know, I'm just kind of curious to see what anybody else, any problems anybody else had. So if you had problems, let them know, let me know if yours is great, leave it down there, leave it in the comments and, uh, I'll order, maybe I'll just order a whole new one because you can order, you know, this, you can order a new iron with, and it comes with a tip included. So I'll just order another iron with a, with a, with a wedge chip. If, you know, if this thing is, is, if everybody else has had great luck with them, you know, maybe it's just me. I'll give it another shot because, I, like I said, I really like this. And, uh, you know, I, I would like to keep using it. So I didn't really have a script or anything set up for this. I was just kind of talking off the cuff. And uh, if you have any, any questions, comments, suggestions, or anything like that, leave them in the comments down below. And uh, I'll see you there. All right. You have a good one. Bye-bye.